Hey, mean Matt here, and this is the last installment I already did too. We had Money in the Bank 2011, Money in the Bank 2013, this one, Money in the Bank 2017. And I swear that Kyle and I did this for Wheels of Fury, and I thought maybe I did a review on it, but doesn't appear like I did. I know I must have did the predictions for that, so... It was... Well, I chopped a lot of memories, a lot of interesting memories, that's for sure. So we start off with this match. We've got the Hype Bros, Boncho Rowley, and Zack Ryder, who defeated the Colognes, Epico, and Primo, the Sunshine State. Yeah, so this was, well, I, I didn't see this one. The Hype Bros was a very interesting take team. In fact, they both were. I think the Colognes being from wrestling royalty, they should have went somewhere more, but it's unfortunate they didn't have Carlito in there at the time. They would have had all three. But it is what it is. The hype grows. It's too bad that they broke up when they did. I thought that those two could have really had a good run. And unfortunately that didn't work out. Matt Cardona ended up going elsewhere. There's a rumor that he will be back. Chelsea Green is already in WWE, so... And as for Mojo, I think here's a guy who was the most positive wrestler in WWE at that time, and... Shit, I wish he would have came back. But... So, you have the first ever... Money in the bank for the women. Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Natalia, Tamina, and Carmella. Well, I will give you this. It was a car wreck. This was at a time where you had to have the women's division thrive. It was all a joke. Give defense a chance. That was all a fucking joke for some reason or another. I mean, let's think about it. WrestleMania 25, the first ever Divas Battle Royal. Who ended up burning that match? Oh yeah, Anthony Carella and a fucking match! And this match, very good match, very good match indeed. We have James Ellsworth coming out, and he goes up on a briefcase, and he goes up on the ladder, and he grabs the fucking briefcase. I mean, this was so bad that they had to restart the Money in the Bank match, the epic Women's Money in the Bank match on Raw the next night. Even though Carmella was already the Money in the Bank winner. So, uh, 
What a fucking stupid move. Really. This was the dumbest thing I ever saw. It's still dumb. It was stupid. It was bullshit. And it shouldn't have happened! Fuck you, Vince. So we have the Take Team Championships. The SmackDown Take Team Championships, if you will. You've got the New Day! You've got Biggie and Kofi Kingston with Xavier Woods versus the Usos. And this is the first of many, obviously, that they've had over the years. And it was okay. I mean, Big E, for a guy his size, who can move that fast, I think is pretty fucking cool. And I hope he comes back soon. And if you just watch SmackDown, then you saw the Usos basically break up from the bloodline. So I think Money in the Bank they're going to have a match. With Roman and Solo versus the Usos, which is fine. But this was a count out. Now I can't remember how it got resolved, obviously, but... You know, it was a back and forth for years. And yeah, I mean... When you look at a lot of the feuds... And you look at... Okay, this is getting stale. I don't necessarily think this was getting stale. I just think... Because they had a lot of ideas. You know, and I think that was pretty cool. I think that these two take teams... Could have wrestled another five years. Maybe. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with... The take team titles at this point. I know they're gonna have to nut up and take two titles, but we'll see when that happens. But this was a good match. It wasn't a great match, but it was a good match for one of them feuds. You know. They have a match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. You've got Naomi. Who defeated Lana. Now we have Naomi Trinity Fatu. She's on Impact Wrestling. She just wrestled last week. On Against All Odds. That was pretty cool. Lana who's. Due to go to AEW. As a, a part of being with her husband Mero. But that's remained to be seen. But this was a good match too. Carmella tried to interfere. Cashing in her money in the bank. Whatever. So that feud would probably happen, I guess. Yeah. You have the WWE title, Jinder Mahal with the Singh Brothers versus Randy Orton. You had his dad, Cowboy Bob Orton, in the crowd. Of course, the Bollywood boys tried to interfere, and Randy had none of it. He disposed of the Singh Brothers. I called them the Bollywood one, whatever. You know, you thought maybe Randy might have won back the WWE title, but Jinder Mahal ended up going over him, which I thought was a good move. But I think he needed to be the champion for a lot longer, and unfortunately, it didn't last that long. And that's a shame, but at the same time, you know, well, at least he was the champion. Yeah, you know, it would be the first East Indian WWE Champion, but he was born in Canada, but whatever. That, you know, it, it is the way it is. He represented India. He is with uh, Sangha and Shear, so that's pretty cool. You know, we'll see where that goes. But yeah, I think this was a good match, and the right person went over. I got a take team match. You got Breezango. Who defeated the Ascension. Now what's cool about this is that. Repeating myself. Killer Kyle did a play by play. With me recently. Against all odds. You have. 
you know, Connor or Khan as he is known as now, and Jody Dango, or in this case, Fandango, and this was a good match. Now, ironically enough, the year before, I saw both of them here in Peterborough, Ontario. It was a good match. They were in a fatal four-way, but it was fun. You thought maybe the Ascension were going to win as opposed to them being very powerful, but at the time they had this stupid gimmick. But yeah, you know, Breezango won this match. They were probably one of the most entertaining wrestlers. Like, you know, it's what sports entertainment is all about. It's in my opinion. You have these two guys that can wrestle their ass off and go, but can also be funny and, well, try to be funny and anything like that. I think that was a good team. Like, yeah, Johnny Curtis had a good singles run. Tyler Breeze had a good singles run. But those two together, it was pretty cool. You have the last match. Not gonna do it. AJ Styles, Dolph Ziggler, Kevin Owens, who was the United States Champion at that time, and had the new look that he had. And Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh yes, Baron Corbin. And this match was cool. Again, carnage, and you didn't know who was gonna win. In fact, you might have thought that Dolph Ziggler was gonna become two-time Money in the Bank. That didn't happen. You had a good one-on-one -on -one again with AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura and that's pretty cool to see obviously you wrestled at Wrestlemania the next year and all this stuff but you knew their history in Japan so that was pretty fucking cool and then Baron Corbin wins, goes up, grabs the briefcase. You know, sometimes I wonder, like, I talked about him to death already, so I'm just gonna fucking leave that because he's in NXT, he's back in NXT now. So hopefully he gets the NXT title. Put the fucking man over, for fuck's sake. Seriously. So that was Money in the Bank 2017. This was a good thing to review all three of these that were... Actually, I, I did enjoy. This is, you know, you look at this and I think, yeah, they could have changed it a lot. They could have made sense of the Money in the Bank winner and everything else, but they fucking did the women's Money in the Bank match. They could have made sense of that, but again, it was a fucking joke. But it was fine for what it was, I guess. I don't know. Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods and Biggie versus, well, it was Biggie and Kofi Kingston versus the Usos. They always had good matches. So, anyways. Yep, there it is. Money in the Bank coming up soon at Wembley Stadium in London, England. So, look forward to that next week for Wheels of Fury. We'll talk to you later. Bye. So, you know that them cutting WCW was a long time coming. But, you know, I think that there's this myth out there that Jamie Keller is no, really. that's why he gets a pleasure at cutting WCW. I don't think that's the case at all. If you look at some of his earlier interviews, that 